Welcome to our lecture online. Another amazing discovery, which also shows against the again the principle of equivalence, is the effect on time because of gravity. We already know, and we saw in the previous video, that there's an effect when you get into a stronger gravitational field, time actually slows down. So the more space is curved, the slower time. And so what we can see here, if we have a planet and we place a clock right on the surface of the planet, where the acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, and then we take the very same clock and put it far away in space, where gravity is much, uh, much lower, then we will see that the time of the clock right here is much slower than the time of the clock right there. And again, when I say much slower, of course, it's a very small difference, but we can measure the difference. We can actually, when we use very good atomic clocks, we can actually measure the difference, and that experiment has been shown to be the case. But then, in the principle of equivalence, if we create an artificial gravity by putting a clock on a rotating disk, we can actually see the very same effect. So let's say we have three clocks. We have a clock that is positioned right at the center of the disk. We have a clock that's positioned at the edge of the disk. And we have a clock that's positioned right beyond the disk. And therefore, you can see that there's no artificial gravity caused on this clock right here because there's no radius and the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. And so there's no v, there's no radius, there's no artificial gravity. There's no artificial gravity outside here either. And so what we find is that the time on these two clocks happens to be the same. The time on clock one is equal to the time on clock three. But clock two, which is placed at the very edge of the rotating disk, is experiencing artificial gravity. If the disk is rotating at the angular velocity omega and the radius of the disk is r, then we can calculate that the velocity of clock two, we'll call it v sub two, is equal to the product of the radius times the angular velocity. Now, if we take that velocity and we place it inside the centripetal acceleration equation, we know that the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. So we take this v right here, and let's call it v sub 2, v sub 2 squared over r, then we create an artificial acceleration. And of course, we know that f equals ma, and in this case, we have the force is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. So the artificial gravity, the artificial force created by the fast rotation of the disk actually does affect time in the exact same way as when you place a clock on an actual location like that by a planet where there is the experience of gravity. Now, if we set the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r, equal to the acceleration due to gravity of that particular planet, could be planet Earth, then it turns out the time experienced by this clock is exactly the same as the time experienced by that clock. There is no difference in the time between these two clocks, and that is the amazing result, again, of the principle of equivalence and the time shift caused by a gravitational force. Be it a real gravitational force in space due to the presence of a planet, which causes space to warp, or the artificial gravity created by a fast rotating disk. The result is exactly the same, and the clocks cannot tell the difference. That's an amazing result, again, of the principle of equivalence and the effect of gravity on time. And there you go, again, a way of proving that Einstein was correct when he said that there's something more to it than the force of gravity caused by the equation that Newton came up with a couple hundred years ago. And that is how it's done. Did they actually do that experiment? They actually did that experiment and they found the result exactly the way it's predicted. How big does R have to be? <laughs> Well, you got to have a fast moving clock, but again, it's not that hard to create a g, an acceleration equal to g. g is only 9.8 meters per second squared, and you can indeed measure that difference. Yeah, but r has to be... No, it, no, it's really, if you have a fairly good rotating disk, you can easily create that. Just have a good clock. A clock strong enough to withstand the gravitational force, but then, you know, oh, you every clock that. does. No, you do need to use an atomic clock because we're talking about nanoseconds of difference here. So yeah, it's a very tiny difference, but it can be measured and it is correct.